Is, uh, is Tennessee bad? Definitely not. Definitely not. Definitely not. I mean, maybe next year, maybe the year after, but year two, Josh Heifel, definitely not. Definitely not. Uh, no, no, no chance. Honestly, um, they haven't beat Alabama since the the iPhone didn't exist. Yeah, I think Last George time. Bush had you know just mm-hmm. got into his like second term, and you know he was just getting you know rolling with everything that happened during that term. Um, but no, Tennessee's definitely not back. I mean, they had a good recruiting class. They finished strong last year. Everyone has, you know, it was a high contender for this year, potentially, in the SEC East. But let's just be real. Like, they're getting bulldozed by Alabama. They're getting bulldozed by Georgia. And then you go ahead and drop another loss, guaranteed, somewhere along the way. Um, but I do think if you give Josh Heupel another season or two to implement that spread offense, I think they could probably be something. But this year, no. But no, we should, we should ask that question frequently, you know? Uh, is you Tennessee back? You have to. It's, it's a hot topic. It always <laughs> is. Um, somebody's always saying how Tennessee's back. And I'm just Texas too, though. Uh, not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Um, maybe in a couple of years they get, you know, they move, actually move into the SEC and get, get some, uh, some recruits out of that. Maybe. Yeah, I mean, you know, a lot of people have them is a potential upset, you know, pick over Alabama, week two. And when I say a lot of people, I mean, like, Texas fans specifically. (laughs) And, you know, they're not going to win that game. They know that. And I think maybe next year when they travel to Tuscaloosa, it's going to be a little bit harder for them to win that game. But I think they're actually more capable of winning that game next year than they are this year. I don't – Texas is also not bad. Let's put it that way. I I just – I don't see it in the cards for them this year. Um, And, I mean, honestly, going to – even next year, going to Tuscaloosa, come on. That's, no, it's going to be tough. Uh, it's maybe like, year three. We'll give them year three, see. Yeah, I think Coach Sark is a good coach, but when you're at a big program like Texas, they're going to want to win this year. They're going to want to win every year. They're going to want to be in a contention for a college football playoff spot, and they're not there yet. But same thing with Tennessee. We'll have to just rehash that each week and just see, you know I mean? Are they back? Neither one of them are back at the current moment, though. All right, so Lane, playoff predictions. Way too early right now. Who's in? All right, so I think the number one seed will probably be Alabama. Let's just be honest. They're going to go undefeated. They're not going to lose a game. They're going to beat Georgia probably in the SEC championship game. Even if they do stumble along the way, I think they end up making it in as the one seed. Uh, number two, I'm going to have to go with Ohio State. I think they'll probably be another undefeated team. And, you know, I think the last couple of years in college football, we haven't seen a lot of undefeated teams. Like, I understand you had Cincinnati last year. You know, you have, you know, LSU. You know, you got Georgia's had an undefeated season. And, I mean, I understand, you know, that that, that, that happens occasionally. But I think next year is a year we have Alabama undefeated, Ohio State undefeated. Clemson at number three undefeated. And then I think number four could potentially be another undefeated team, but I think they have one loss, and I think that number four team will be Utah. Um, I just think, you know, someone like Utah running in the Pac-12, all they have to do, if they lose one game, and if it's to someone respectable like, you know, USC or Oregon or even to Florida, their first game, I think they could still make it into the playoffs at 11-1. Is a regular season, obviously. But and then obviously going to the Pac twelve and winning the Pac twelve. Yeah, yeah, of course. Who, who do you have? Uh I, I agree with all that, but I've got you know, I've got a dark horse for you here, I think. Not, they're not they're not so far outside of the, the conversation that it, it's outrageous, but um Oklahoma, what do you think? Coming in at number four. Oklahoma possibly. I, I mean I could see it and I, and you know, they lost a lot of key players. Obviously, Caleb Williams going to USC, following Lincoln Riley, that was a big loss. But, you know, I I still think Oklahoma is probably the favorite coming out of the Big 12. You know, a lot of people are high on Baylor. And, you know, some other people have Oklahoma State potentially being a dark horse team. But I still think the Big 12 runs through Norman. And I I think that's going to remain the same this year. Now, whether or not they get in the playoffs, I think it's just all about resume and if they can avoid a you know loss to a lesser team. Because, I mean, that's Oklahoma's biggest problem over the years. They end up losing to someone they shouldn't lose to. It's probably, probably going to happen this year at some point. 
But it depends on who that is and what time, and maybe they could get in. All right, so going, going from the playoff, which we're talking playoff, we're talking Alabama, let's move into the Heisman. All right. Okay. Bryce Young could repeat. Um, I think he's the Vegas favorite. I think you're right, and you know I think he should be. I, I don't I don't see him slowing down at all from from his numbers last year, uh, especially with coming off that loss in the national championship. Uh, I you know they're out there practicing hard, and Nick Saban doesn't lose twice, and I I think his quarterback's going to follow suit. I agree. I mean, I I think if anything, he probably will rain you know bring up his completion rate. I mean, I know last year he was at 66.9%, and I think if he can get that up to a 70%, I think it's almost a lock. I mean, that's just me. Um, but then again, you don't know with injuries, right? For sure. Yeah, well, I mean, if in, in, like you said, if he, if he gets that completion percentage up, I mean, you're seeing, you're seeing the rest of the stat line <laughs> rise, too. Oh, for so sure. Look, I mean, uh, so 47 touchdowns last year, that may turn into 55. Who knows? Good. The guy's insane. Yes, and and you know I think along with him comes another Alabama player that I think ends up benefiting Bryce Young because he's going to be making a lot of stops, and we know who that is. That's our guy, Will Anderson Jr. Will Anderson Jr. If you ask me right now, <clears throat> I, I know it's he's a defensive player, and people people don't like them winning the Heisman. But he is by far, without a doubt, best but best player on the field every time he's on the field. Absolutely. I mean, I know we kind of learned in the last two weeks that it's illegal for NFL teams to even think about tanking with the Miami Dolphins, you know, fiasco. <laughs> but if I'm an NFL team next year that is going to be a top five pick, and you know it's going to be, you know, you're going to be within the top five. If you don't, if you have a quarterback, or at least you have somewhat of an answer to quarterback, you go tank for Will Anderson. That is how good he's going to be at the next level. So I think if he stays healthy all year, plays it out, and Alabama does what they probably should do going undefeated, I mean, I don't see how if he has a similar stat line, I don't see how you don't give it to him. And I think the bias will go against Bryce Young possibly for winning back-to-back because we know no one's well, done that in wants 40 to. years. Nobody's going to want to do that, especially an Alabama quarterback. You know? Yeah. <laughs> it's it's funny you mentioned the the Dolphins uh, fiasco over there. They just they just find the the billionaire the billionaire with a B find the billionaire one point five million dollars. Yeah, I just like you know, come on, come I, on, guys. <laughs> I, I I don't I don't think they really thought that one out. Like you know, you, you hurt the Dolphins fan base more than you hurt that guy. Absolutely. I mean, the Dolphins got a harsher punishment than Deshaun Watson. I mean, what does that say <laughs> on the NFL's part? You know, that's to be determined. Oh, man. Because I know the fiasco with Deshaun Watson still going on, but at the end of the day, I think that they did kind of screw over the Dolphins. I think they did. But back to Will Anderson. If, yeah, yeah, sorry. If, if you're an NFL team and you need a defensive guy, like you need a Von Miller type guy. You need someone to come in that is going to be an edge rusher that can also line up, you know, and play in a defensive line if he needs to. And can step back and play safety in certain situations. I think Will Anderson I mean, is that guy. Yeah, he's an all around athlete. I mean but just, just I mean just looking at his stats from, from last year, like seventeen and a half seconds. Insane. It, it, I'm I, I think he beats the record this year. I think I think, I think, I think, I think he, he has twenty one he may have twenty five. Do you see? Do you see? Do you see his his face in the team photo? Oh yeah, looks possessed, ready to go. Look like uh, <laughs> <laughs> ready to go. <clears throat> it looks like he just did a fucking line, and he he's he's ready to he's go. Gonna come kill you. Like, yeah, he's, and then he's, he's taking heads. Exactly, and you know that seventeen and a half number. I mean, you know Georgia, they figured out how to stop. Him. And I say they figured out how to stop him, but that's not really what happened. What yeah. happened was he got double teamed mm-hmm. the entire game in the national championship game, mm-hmm. and he still managed to disrupt. And, Absolutely, and, well, and, and, and there's there's only so much you can do when there's you know two three hundred pound guys fighting you. you exactly. Like, exactly. Um, now moving on from those let's, two, let's let's go let's go north. 
I'm thinking C.J. Stroud, Ohio State. I mean, guy last year had almost identical numbers to Bryce Young. Um, But, you know, Ohio State slipped up versus Michigan, and we all know the rest. You know, Heisman winners tend to be teams that are going to win national championships. Well, and, I mean, you look at the stat line, he's a more accurate quarterback than Bryce Young. He's over that, you know, 70% mark at 71.9, and – that right there, and he threw one less interception too. Mm-hmm. So I mean, you got to think like if he can replicate those numbers, and let's say Ohio State can actually be undefeated this year, right, going into the Heisman race, then I think C.J. Stroud could very well win. Um, you know, I, I think the Big Ten this year is going to be very loaded. Obviously, Michigan's going to be good again. They're not going to be the same team from last year, but they're going to be a very strong team. I know Ohio State's got to play Notre Dame week one, so that's a good test. Like, you know, we'll be able to see what C.J. Stroud is going to be able to do week one. Well, you know, you never really know what what Notre Dame you're going to get, though. Like, you know. Yeah, exactly. Are you going to get the, we lose to Cincinnati last year? Or are you going to get the, oh, we're going to go play a Big Ten team and we're going to win by 35? I mean, you really don't know what you're going to get with them. You really don't. And I, I, I think they're always in the, on the outside looking in. But I don't see anything changing with them this year. I mean, let, let, let me, let's talk about this. Notre Dame, they joined a conference. Are they doing better? It depends on what conference. ACC. No. I, I don't think that's a smart move. I think that actually would probably lower the brand. I think if they're going to go anywhere, it's the Big Ten. I mean, go play against Ohio State, Michigan – Penn State, you know, your Wisconsin's, go play against those guys every year. We don't want to see you go play just against Clemson in the ACC. I mean, and now, granted, there are other teams in the ACC. We learned last year, you know, Pittsburgh's a good team. NC State's going to be a good team this year. But at the end of the day, the prestige is in the Big Ten. And I think that's where they would actually be able to excel and they would actually be able to make a lot more money. And right now, that's the biggest part why they won't join is money. And I think it's kind of funny because they would actually make more money if they were to join the Big Ten. But that's just me. It just uh, so let's let's move on to uh, um, what were we talking about? Heisman. That's where. I'm sorry, I, I yeah. keep getting us off track. Now, somebody from the West Coast is is gonna be in New York. We know. Who do you think that is? I think if you had to pick one today, um, you know, some people would probably coin Cameron Rising um, out of Utah, you know, returning quarterback to probably be a guy that could be in contention there. But out of the Pac-12, I'm going to go with Caleb Williams, transfer to USC from Oklahoma. You know, followed Lincoln Riley. And, you know, last year in the limited time he saw action, you know, he was on fire. He was electric. He was, you know, he's a dual-threat quarterback. Through 21 touchdowns, four interceptions last year. If he can replicate those numbers over a full season and get USC into the 10 win total, possibly he could win. But I think it all goes back to how good is your team going to be because that's how that's who the Heisman picks. You know, there's been years where we've seen players that clearly are the better player that show up on a team that isn't going to win the national championship and they don't win the Heisman. I think that could be the case with him. Now, okay, hot take here, out of the West, Bo Nix, at Oregon, new offense, he's feeling good, he's ready to go, beats Georgia week one. He's Does definitely on the radar. Him? Is he Is he, Is he? he in the top then? If, he be, if they can upset Georgia week one, then absolutely. I mean, if he, it, it could happen if he can, you know, keep it under five interceptions that game. Yeah, I mean, that's going to be – that's going to be that's brutal. That's tough for him. I don't know. That's going to be brutal. <laughs> I mean, and, you know – that's, that's even if he's on the field. Who knows? I think he's going to be the guy for him. I, I, I think – I don't think you turn down a three-year starter of the SEC to be your guy no. when you're in the Pac-12, especially starting out the season versus Georgia as an opponent that Knicks – you know, hasn't had much success with in the win-loss ratio. But compared to some of the other teams Georgia's played over the th- last three seasons, he's done better than most. I mean, let's just be honest. I mean, Georgia has decimated quarterbacks. And Auburn stayed in the, some of those games. But, you know, it really all depends on the front seven of Oregon. 
that game. It, it, it really with for for Bo Nix, I really just think he's got a he's got a, a just a little bit of that clutch gene. You know, you know, yeah, he just does. a little bit, right? He does. He's just got to find that, and then you just really concentrate that. Try to try to gain more access to it. Right? Yeah, and, and he could be good. He could you know, if if he could do that, he he might still be at, at Auburn. Who knows? Yeah, and you know, I think him leaving Auburn was more of a. I think it was just a disagreement with the head coach Brian Harson. I think that was the reason why he left. And you know, I, I mean, <laughs> Brian I mean, Harson, man, what a guy. Yeah, I mean, and 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 that's a guy that you know, he he's really known for his quarterback, you know, play mm-hmm. or his quarterbacks able, you know, to perform underneath him when he's you know over him. And I think that. Going forward, Bo Nix, you know, he's going to have to live off that decision he made. And maybe he has this whole new mindset and he's going to go out to Eugene and they're going to run the table and he's going to get in the playoffs and prove all the doubters wrong. But I think, honestly, Oregon's chances of a national championship in week one. I think that they lose to Georgia. I don't. It's a, if they lose to Georgia week one, it's over. There's no chance. There's yeah. No, none at all. At, uh, it, it, just beating Georgia would be. It's so unlikely that it happens that that would immediately elevate them to a status that that they probably shouldn't be at. Exactly. Um, well, it, it it'd be interesting to see. Speaking on week one, though, who do you have as a potential upset, or what game do you have as the like marquee game? Like you're the most excited to see. I you know I really I really want to see what Utah can do against Florida. I really I I. Honestly, I think they're going to go. I think they're going to win the game. Um, I'm, I'm going to make a hot take on, on okay, that exact okay. comment. Yeah. This is Utah's biggest game in school history. I, I, I know that sounds crazy, but with all the hype they have coming off of last season, playing in Gainesville, in the swamp, mm-hmm. week one, if they win that game, they're set. Mm-hmm. If they lose that game, it's over. It, I That's exactly what I was going to say, man. Like, they lose to Florida, they're done, season's over, no playoff, maybe a New Year's Six Bowl. Maybe, yeah. You maybe. Know? And, and, you know, Florida could win that game. If you go look on paper, Florida is the better team with talent. However, through experience and through performance last year, we're going to give Utah the edge. I think Utah is a two-point favorite right now. I know Florida I, opened as a favorite, but I, I want to see Utah win. I really do. I think I think it'll. I think it'll be an interesting season if Utah wins that game. Yeah, I, I think so too, and I think I think they do. I think they do. Um, if I had to pick a score right now, I'd probably say Utah gets around thirty, and I would say Florida ends up with about twenty-one. I, I think that's what's going to happen there. I think you know Anthony Richardson at Florida. You know he's he's a big physical threat at quarterback, and I don't think Utah is going to be used to seeing that. Mm-hmm. From the start, so you may see an early Florida lead, but I think that Utah is way more experienced, and I think that if they can with handle the noise, which is tough, that's a tough spot, but they can with handle the noise, I think they win that game. Yeah, yeah, I I, I think the same thing, man. Uh, like I said, I I, I want to see Utah win that game. I. What are you thinking? Uh, we we got to talk about them because you know they 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 shit the bed last year. They got into the playoff and they ruined it for the entire group of five. All right. Yeah, the Bearcats. Yeah. But they, how are they looking against Arkansas week one? I mean, they can win that game. They I mean they very well could win that. Game. Arkansas though they're they're not the same Arkansas they have been in recent years in you know past ten years they're no. a completely different football team. Yeah, Sam Pittman's done a good job turning them around and you know he he's changed the whole direction of that you know program and over a short span. I mean I don't think anyone expected them to have a comeback like they've had so far. I think you know Ole Miss for example everyone kind of expected Lane Kiffin to boost them right. <laughs> Josh Heupel with Tennessee, we kind of expected it. But Sam Pittman with Arkansas, that was a surprise. And oh, yeah, nobody thought, thought it was, that was going to happen. No. Um, you know, you're really – I mean, you're seeing even more than just uh, Arkansas in, in the SEC. These, in the, you know, the era of 
of Nick Saban. Um, it, some some of the other SEC teams have really had a hard time getting going. Uh, you know, and, and Arkansas is one of them. They they're starting to make a comeback, but uh, Kentucky too as well. Um, Kentucky's definitely like they they definitely boosted their prestige. Mm-hmm. Um, now I think that they've kind of reached their height. I think last year, you know, they took advantage of the fact that Tennessee's implementing a new style. You know what I mean? I think they took advantage of the fact that Dan Mullen and Florida completely just fell apart. Like, and I, I think that kind of inflated them up I mean, a little bit. Dan Mullen's gonna fall apart anywhere. So <laughs> yeah, it, it, exactly. You gotta expect that. No, Kentucky's definitely one of those other programs that they they surprised everyone over the last five years, and have really made strides. But I take here, Lane. Maybe Kentucky, just maybe Kentucky wins the East. Maybe they win the SEC East. That'd be the hottest it's, take. It's that, not impossible. It's okay. not impossible. <laughs> but you know, I'm gonna give you even a hotter take. I think Mississippi State could be a potential threat in the SEC West. I, I mean, I I don't I don't disagree with that. I don't disagree with that at all. I mean, you oh. know, it's year three of the air raid now. All right, under Mike Leach, you know they're bringing Will Rogers back as starting quarterback. They're the most experienced team in the SEC with eight returning eight, starters, eight, eight starters on offense, on offense. That's, nine on that's defense. That's big. That's big. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you've got. Almost the entire football field. I saw another stat with them. So, last year, out of their top 14 tacklers on the team, they return 11 of them. That's going to be very crucial in the SEC West. For them to be that experienced with that offense, you bring back that many defenders as well. Uh, You know, they have a tough schedule. I think they're ranked the second hardest schedule behind Auburn. And... You know, looking at their schedule, they could be a nine and three, ten and two. I think. I you know. I yeah. You know, I could. I I could see them at, at ten and two. I I think. I think they take the egg bowl. I really do. I I I feel like you know Lane Kiffin is gonna be classic Lane Kiffin, and eventually you know, he's just gonna fall apart. Yeah, and and you know Ole Miss is another one of them teams that last year got a little hype, right? You know, everyone's starting to be kind of high on Lane Kiffin and Ole Miss as a potential, you know, new program to, you know, fear and everything. And I'm not I'm not taking any shots at Ole Miss, but I just think they're going to have a step back this year. Uh, and I think personally that they do beat Mississippi State, though. I actually do have them beating Mississippi State. But I, I think overall, I think they're going to slip back to that 7-5, and five, you know, range, maybe an 8-4. and four. You know, we'll see what happens, but I, it, it's it's tough for teams that do not have four complete years of top class recruits to be able to win ten games back to back. And I, I don't think Ole Miss is going to be able to do it. I just don't think they're going to be able to do it this year. Maybe in the future, but not right maybe, now. Maybe, maybe. Yeah, I just they'll they'll, they'll be a, they'll be a good team this year. They'll be they'll be a hard team to beat. I'll give them that. But I, I you know I think I think Mississippi State's gonna gonna pull it out this year. Um, now, are they gonna are they gonna they they could maybe maybe uh, win the SEC West, but you gotta get past Alabama. That's not happening. Right. That's not happening. now now they do have Alabama at home this year, so like they you know they're in Starkville, but. Here's the thing, you're you're a forty five minute drive from Tuscaloosa. There's not much advantage to that. And you know, speaking of when they play Alabama, so I personally think you know, Mississippi State will be undefeated going into that game. You know oh, for sure. Yeah. I mean who what we got uh they Memphis week one? Right? That's a win. All right. Um they're going uh to Arizona. Got, oh, that's LSU a tough one. Death Valley. All right. I think that's the game that they stand out. I think that's the game that they get on everyone's radar because I think Brian Kelly's a good coach. You know, he's kind of right underneath that, you know, Davo Sweeney, you know, Kirby Smart kind of, you know, caliber coach where, you know, he had some great success at Notre Dame. Never won the national championship, but, you know, he went to a couple and made the playoffs and obviously just got blasted by Alabama or Ohio State whenever he made it. But – I mean that's to be expected. Like, yeah, I, I, I wouldn't want to be a coach going to play 
either one of those teams in the national championship. No, by no means. And, you know, I, I, I think, though, Mississippi State wins that game. And I think rolling in, they play, you know, Bowling Green, that's a win. Mm-hmm. I think they play Texas A&M. And, look, that's another program. Everyone's so hype about them. Everyone thinks that this is going to be a team to, to beat, you know. I don't I, – over the first three years – at College Station, what has Jimbo Fisher done besides upset number one Alabama? Oh, absolutely nothing. Exactly. He's so Jimbo Fisher, like <laughs> it, now, if they can counter the only the only reason he he won the national championship at Florida State was because of some you know crab legs. Yeah, like, yeah. I mean, I, <laughs> yeah, and you know he got a lot of hype off of that. And I just I don't I don't know that I would have gone with him at Texas A and M anyway. I mean. If they get another good recruiting class, I think they could really do some damage. But it's going to have to depend on how much money they can uh, raise up. <laughs> they got oil money, so, you know. Hey, hey, that, that, those NIL deals coming from BP. <laughs> but Texas A&M, I think they lose to Ole, or Mississippi State. I think they lose to them. And I think Arkansas coming up after that, Mississippi State takes care of business again. I think they travel to Kentucky. That's a trap game. That's a trap game. But I think they win. Here's where we get to Alabama. It's not the fact that they have to play just Alabama. They play a three-game stretch against some of the three best teams in the SEC, you know, with Alabama, Auburn, and Georgia, all at home. And I know Auburn is not the same caliber as Alabama and Georgia, but when it comes to talent on the field, they're, they're among the best in the Auburn, SEC. Auburn's never – a bad team. They're never a bad team. Sometimes they're, they're just horrible. They're, they're sometimes they're just bad. Like, yeah, like, they're not <laughs> bad. They're just not good. You know. Yeah. I just uh, you, they're gonna get in there. They're gonna play hard. Um, and if you're if, if you're not careful, Auburn could Auburn could go undefeated this season if everybody decided they weren't a threat. Exactly. But uh, you know, with that three game stretch for Mississippi State, they're going to lose to Alabama and Georgia. I think they beat Auburn again for the second year in a row. You know, last year they had that miraculous comeback. You know, Bo Nix goes out, Mississippi State comes back and wins. It was a shootout, barn burner in Auburn. I think, though, this year they win that game. I think they beat East Tennessee State. And then I think the Egg Bowl, I think they lose it at Ole Miss. But they could very well win that game and finish out 10-2. And, and, and that's a hot take. A lot, of team, a lot of people do not have them on the radar, but with that experience – Year three of the air raid, I, I'm just saying that's a team that a lot of people I think are not looking out for. And, and it's not it's not uncharacteristic of them either. It, this happens every few years, you know. We'll just have to see if they can actually keep that keep that momentum uh, for for more than one season. Uh, but SEC, so uh, and I want to want to widen this out from just the SEC to, uh, as well, but. So we've talked about both these teams, Texas and Oklahoma, not this year, next year, coming in to the SEC. How does that help them, hurt them this season? Real quick, before I, I, I move on to my other point. Well, I think they have until 2025 to, to join, but it, all indications are that they will be in the SEC next year. Um, you're saying how that will help them in recruiting? Is that is it going to help them? Or is it going to hurt them? Who knows? I think it helps them. I mean, because the Big Twelve really right now is Oklahoma and the boys, and and yeah, I'm taking a shot at Texas. I mean they uh, they have the name, but yeah, it's Oklahoma and the boys pretty much in the Big Twelve. So I mean, you know, I think coming over to the SEC boosts their caliber up. And I think, honestly, the biggest gain is going to be Texas. They're going to be the ones that can potentially make that jump back into you know prominence with joining the SEC. I, I, can, I, I can agree with that. Yeah. Um, now, not just the SEC. you got some other conferences adding in teams. You're getting – I mean, this is putting the SEC at what, 16 teams? Yeah. All right. So that that's a super conference now, right? They're not the only one. There's some realignment going on with the Big Twelve, the Big Ten. Uh, going forward, if we if we see this as a trend, 
are we picking up group of five teams in Power Five conferences? The SEC. And how is that? How is that changing the playoff picture? We, I mean, we got to go bigger, right? Well, I think your next biggest thing that will happen will possibly be a departure of Clemson from the ACC. I mean, they're getting targeted by the SEC, and you know, if that happens. What does the rest of the ACC do, right? I mean, you would you would think probably Florida State, Miami would probably want to jump over too. Um, but when you're talking about like group of five, that opens the door for group of five teams. When you have teams like Clemson, Miami, and Florida State potentially lead the conference, well, you got a Central Florida. UCF. Yeah, exactly. UCF is coming in. ACC looks at them, maybe. Maybe Cincinnati. Yeah, possibly. I mean – I think I, I don't think Cincinnati should go anywhere near the Big Ten. No, no, that, that would not be a good. That would not be a good. I mean, fit. geographically, it yeah, it works makes sense, but on the field, not oh, so much. It'd be rough. Not so much. Um, you know, I but the Big Ten's all over the board. I mean, they did get UCLA and USC, which I thought was just kind of wild. Thinking about geographic locations, yeah. you're speaking on that. You know, players are going to have to fly all the way across the country, you know, to go play in the Rose Bowl, which, I mean, that's going to be a big thing. But, you know, we're learning that a lot of these, you know, rules, unwritten rules about conferences in the past, you know, based off of their name and geographic locations, it's kind of out the window. So it's no, really I mean, just up, up in the air. It's, I mean, it's a different game than it used to be. It's an entirely different game. It's a changing landscape. And uh, you know, I, yeah, I think you gotta you you gotta let that go because I mean, it, it it's re- really it just all comes down to like, all right, how many people are watching this on TV? How much? Ad, how many ads can we run? How many exactly. people are gonna see it? Right. So, you know, if I if I'm hey, honestly even if I'm the SEC, like, do I need Clemson? Because I've already got South Carolina. Yeah, and I mean, I think it just goes to the fact of what is the ACC gonna do? You know, is the ACC trying to expand? If they expand and make it to, you know, make it a 16-team conference and, you know, they can compete again, then maybe. But if they're not, Clemson's probably going to jump. And I think I understand the market's not there, but Clemson's a good product on the field, real good product on the field. So you got to think maybe that would be the big indication there. But I think the SEC, if they were to expand, I think Miami would probably be – geographically the best option just for the sense of you get South Florida and they don't have that market right now. So, I mean, that's, that's why a lot of people have coined them, you know, them two together. But when it comes to Florida state Clemson, it's really about what can you bring us on the field? Florida state, not so much recently, but they have some historic prominence, you know, I, I think maybe, uh, I think maybe we have, we have one of the power five fall off at some point. It's either going to be the Big 12. Of... Big 12 or ACC. You think? Yeah, because I, I, I think the Pac-12 strong as long as Oregon and Utah stay. As long as ACC, Utah stay. I can definitely see. The Big 12, I don't know. Big 12 just the boys now. You know, they just don't the, have Oklahoma. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's just the boys. <laughs> you know, it's who's going to go play in a New Year's Six Bowl be underwhelming and lose to an Ohio State that gets kicked out of the playoffs or, you know, Georgia that gets left out, that, that that's who they will be without Oklahoma and Texas. Oklahoma more than Texas, though. For sure, for sure. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, um, I think that's all the time uh, we, we have today, Lane. Um, you got anything to close out? Um, keep a lookout for Mississippi State. Just keep a lookout for him. Ole Miss, Lane Kiffin, talking to you. You're on alert.